All right, so we're back. I just wanted to show one more quick thing. This is the global menu. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the global menu. You can change which selection you are looking at with encoder 2 here. So we're going to switch which one we want to change here, which like selection we want to change. And then you actually make your selections with encoder 1. So right now you can see in the counter window, we've got clock source and we're set to external. So I'm just going to switch to internal via this knob here. We'll go on to the next one. We've got character format. So William comes from a mathematics and engineering background. He loves the hex decimal format um, associated with programming and stuff like that. So you can either use the decimal format, which is numbers that we are all used to, or you can switch with encoder one here with encoder two here, excuse me, to the hex decimal format. So if you like hex decimal, you can do that. That's going to change your counter window up to that. So we'll go to the next selection here, trigger length. So you have the ability to have, to change the trigger length. It's by default set to one twelfth of a, of a, uh, of a step. That means that as you slow down your sequence, if you have a really slow sequence, the triggers get longer. So we can go to, one millisecond, two milliseconds, five milliseconds, a thirty-sixth of a step, or a twelfth of a step. Our next selection is reset behavior. So this is reset input behavior. So right now it's going to always reset all playheads when you um, send a clock into the reset input. We can change that to sync behavior. This is like den sync. So this means the sequencer will not run unless the gate is high. The squirt pyramid works really well with this. You can send all you can always send a clock and then only send a gate signal when you press play. So that way Metron's always receiving a clock. It's always going to be on time. You press play on the squarp and now it's uh, Metron's going to reset and play along with the squarp. So that's a good um, way to sync it to other sequencers. We'll go to the next uh, guy here. We've got reset output. So this is reset out behavior, output behavior. So end is it'll reset at the end of your variation. Run is just basically like din sync. So now it will send a clock or a uh, gate signal. So it'll be a high gate every time the sequencer is running. And then we've got reset, which is basically anytime the sequencer is reset via the external reset input or the button here. So I'm going to switch back to end. That's a good one to use. What do we got next? Now we've got S bus direction. We went over that in the S bus tutorial, but this is basically, do you want Metron to be the master or do you want it to be chained to another device? And we'll go to the next selection here. We can initialize settings. So if you have some crazy stuff set up, you can just go through and just start from scratch here. That's a good way to just initialize everything. And just um, if you are working from a, uh, previous session that had lots of um, uh, like enables and stuff and you just want to go from scratch just hit global go to initialize settings and then press that encoder and that will that will initialize the whole machine the last one is update this is basically um, this is basically for firmware updates and um, when we do those we'll give you guys instructions on how to do those firmware updates and uh, the last one just shows you what version you're on so right now we're on v1.0 as in the very first released version of Metron. So thank you again for watching. And if you have a Metron, thank you so much for your support. Um, we are super stoked on it. And um, thanks again. And we'll see you guys soon.